this evening. I'm in a new spot, so I wasn't sure how my camera angle was going to be. My name is Bree. I'm the owner and artist of Upcycled by Bree, and I am coming to you this evening with a beautiful antique dresser, and we are going to give it some chippy milk paint. So I teased this a little bit earlier over on my social media. I have done a little bit of work to it already, sanded down the top, gave it a good cleaning, started painting the sides, and then we're going to work on it some more together. So all of the paint and products that I'm using today, you can find over on my website, upcycledbybree.com. And I'm about to drop the milk paint collection right now in the live chat. And then if you are watching the replay, you'll be able to find everything down in the description box. So if you are here, tell me hello. Let me know where you're from. I've got comments right here on this phone. Hey, Brandy, how are you this evening? All right, so I usually get a little bit of mixed emotions about painting these older pieces. This one is in pretty rough shape. It had some pretty wood grain to it, but it's it's uh, it needs too much work. So I decided milk paint would be the good way to go on it because it's got some really like alligatored um, finish. It's old. I think it sat in the sun, so it will come out really well. I'm using Sweet Pickens milk paint, and it is a powdered paint that you mix with water. I've already mixed a little bit up here because it does need to sit for a couple minutes before you use it. So I'm going to give it a stir and see who all is on this evening. And by the way, I am still in my dirty clothes from cleaning this thing, so you get it all natural. Heidi's here. Hello, hello. Stephanie from Florida. Leslie's here. Hey, Leslie. Washington, and it's rainy. I've got Arkansas in the house. Hey, Butch. Sue says she hopes this turns out great. Oh, uh, Jane, you're frozen in New York. I'm sorry. It was 60 degrees here today, you guys. It was beautiful. I'm in Topeka, Kansas. Hey, Patricia. Hey, Shelly. And if I sound a little funny, apologize. The weather keeps going back and forth, so I'm just a little hoarse, but it'll be okay. Um, so this mix that I have is, like I said, a sweet pick and milk paint. It's powdered paint you mix with water. I have mixed up a 50-50 blend been all about the blending here lately. Can you get me a towel? Um, actually, I don't think there are any out there. I think they're all in the clean clothes. I just spilled water. Hold on. Oh, no, memento. Fifty-fifty. <laughs> it's okay, honey. Fifty-fifty blend. It went on a drop cloth of basil and creamy. So this really came out as like this pretty, pretty sage color which y'all know is going to be a very trendy color for 2022. So it was a quarter cup of the basil and a quarter cup of the creamy came out to this beautiful sage and then a half a cup of warm water. So it's one part paint, one part water. And I like to mix mine up with a good old blender. It mixes it up really well and gives it like this frothy, frothy consistency. That's what you want. If you have chunks in it, it's still going to go on. And when you sand it, those chunks will distress well. So it's kind of up to you. However you want to do it. Cold Ohio and Jane loves the green. I knew you would, Jane. All right. So I've got the sides painted already. Um, the, the tricky thing here is I had to make sure I mixed up enough. So I hope I do because I'm not going to be able to get that exact color again. And I am using my Klingon F40. I really like using my Klingon brushes when I'm using the milk paint because you just dip these in water overnight, soak them, and then the next morning the paint like literally just falls out of the bristles. So this is a very pretty sage color. I'm digging it. And then I want you guys to weigh in. Should I do dark oil wax on the top or just go with hemp oil? Either or is going to really bring out the wood grain, make the wood, make the color of the wood pop. Um, the dark oil wax will make it look a little more antiqued and obviously make it darker. So weigh in on that because I want to get that on and sitting. I was thinking personally I would do dark oil wax. I'm going right over these keyholes and I'll probably try to bring them back a little bit later the metal. See how that um, alligator is really popping 
a little alligator texture on there. Dark oil wax, that's what I was thinking too. So far, that's what we're saying. I'm gonna be risky here. Stephanie says she loves the sage green. I do too, and this honestly, um, this reminds me quite a bit of, I don't know, O Olive or Sweetie Jane almost. I don't know. I'd have to hold the other greens up. But Sweet Pickens does have some greens like this. I wanted to see what the um, basil would look like muted down because basil is by far my favorite. And I just have some um, twine stuck through the holes in this because I wanted to be able to make sure I could get the drawers open. The milk paint will paint the drawers shut if you're not careful. We're loving the color so far, awesome. And we're saying dark oil wax, okay. I'm gonna let this chill for just a second and I'm gonna go ahead and apply the dark oil wax to the top because you'll wanna let it sit for like 15 or 20 minutes um, and really soak into the wood. Now, I want to um, make note real quick. Guys, this is an oil-based product. So unlike a lot of the water-based DIY products I use, um, this is combustible. So when you're using rags and stuff and you're throwing them away, make sure you're disposing of them properly. Um, a lot of people do not think of that or do not know that. And I'm just going to pour some out here into a separate container that I can work out of. Um, I use a, like a metal trash can with a lid that I got from the hardware store. It was like 10 or $15 to throw away my oil soaked rags and gloves and whatnot. Okay, and then of course I spilt water on my brush. Hold on. Linda says she hasn't um, tried the milk paint yet. Linda, it's it's a whole different kind of paint than the than the DIY I use, but I love the results. It really gives um, results unlike anything else. All right, so I've got the oil wax in here, and I'm just going in with a little chip brush, and I'm gonna go in and give it a nice nice thickish coat. I've got a little bit of chunkies in my oil wax. Um, this bottle is probably, I don't know, a year and a half old or something. It's no biggie. They will wipe off. I think that's going to be a good call. I had considered leaving the drawers um, wood too, but I thought it was gonna, it would be too dark. I wanted a nice fresh piece for spring for my booth. And um, like I said, the texture on those drawers, it would have been a lot of sanding work. I'd say it took me probably about an hour, maybe an hour and a half even to do the top. I started with an 80 and worked up to um, a 220. And it's not perfect, but I knew that this was gonna be like a chippy, rustic, feeling piece so I wasn't too worried it looks a lot better than it did I'll do some before and after pictures and then um obviously I won't get a hundred percent done with this today I was thinking I'd finish it up in my creative group on Friday so if you are um, following me over on social I put up a video schedule for the week Friday I'll go live over in my creative group Stephanie says she likes the dark oil wax. Stephanie, I love the dark oil wax. I use it on a ton of my wood stuff. Happy New Year, friends. Happy New Year. All right, I'm going to grab um, the link to my creative group for you guys real quick. If you haven't joined that yet, make sure you do so. So that's where we'll finish up Friday. I thought it'd be fun. There you go. So we've got snow in some parts of the world. I had 60 degree weather. It's been kind of crazy. We finally got a couple snows here in Kansas. Um, last week and they weren't, they were light. Not, not too crazy. But I had the opportunity today to get outside and work on a piece of furniture. It's been forever I'm dripping everywhere. It's fine, there's a drop cloth. <laughs> So I took that opportunity. 
If you saw yesterday, I scored a huge free estate sale leftover haul um, from a very generous small business owner here in town, um, TJ's Estate Sales, and I was so excited to get this piece. I think this was my favorite piece. There's a couple other furniture pieces. I think this one was my favorite. But um, later this week, Thursday, I will be doing a haul video on that haul. And then Sunday, I'll do some an edited video with some flips too. So it'll be fun. Hi from Kansas City. Hello, Kathleen Johnston. Was it nice and warm there today too, I'm assuming? Kathleen Hernandez says she would have used black oil wax on the entire piece. Kathleen, I thought about salvaging the wood on this entire piece. I really did think about it. But it was just not in quite good enough shape. It would have taken a lot of time. This piece over here, this personal piece of mine, I am I, I thought about painting it, but I think I'm going to refinish the wood on it instead. Okay, this is getting a little drippy onto my paint. Oops, no biggie. It'll all distress anyway. There we go. So leave me a comment. Have you tried milk paint before? Sweet, Stephanie joined the creative group. Stephanie, that group is awesome. There's so many amazing ladies in there and we share so much inspiration. Um, and then also if you guys have your own channels and stuff, I'm all about spreading the word, supporting you guys too. So go join, get some inspiration, share your ideas, share your small business. All right, so that's on, like I said, you can maybe you can see those little chunkies I'm not worried about it. This was a custom order, Grandma's Precious Antique. I would have made sure my oil wax wasn't chunky, but it's okay. I don't know what I'm gonna do if a pristine, very modern look really becomes trendy someday. And I can't just slap my paint on anymore. So this, um, this paint sat for about 10 minutes before I went live. Eh, 20 minutes before I went live. You can still tell it's still a good consistency. If you let your milk paint sit too long, it will get gummy and goopy. You can't use it forever. So you only mix up as much as you need. Sometimes if I mix up too much, I will grab um, some random scrap wood or something and just paint that and that way I can make it into a sign later or build something with it and that way I'm not wasting my paint. Oh and you guys I did not use any bond extra bond in this. So extra bond is another Sweet Pickens product and this is an additive um, that you put into your paint to help it adhere to the surface. You use it when your piece is really shiny or maybe you're trying to paint um, a metal or, or ceramic or something with milk paint, uh, you're going to have to use Bond. But since this was really dry, old, um, antique wood, I didn't use any Bond. I knew it would stick. And that's just from some experience. So I don't recommend using milk paint on a precious antique the first time you're using it. Play around with it a little bit. It's finicky. Terry said this is the first time on my channel loving what I'm seeing. Hey, thank you so much, Terry. Welcome. My name is Bree, and I love to paint furniture. I love to do thrift flips. I find junk on the side of the road and I turn it into cool stuff. Um, everything I'm using and everything I sell, Terry, is over on my website, upcycledbybree.com. And I'll go ahead and drop that link again for you. But make sure you check out my channel, sub to my channel, because I have over 100 edited videos now, too. 
super exciting. Been on YouTube for a year, y'all. <laughs> Um, Linda says, can you use the bond with any paint or just to milk paint? Linda, the extra bond is made specifically for the Sweet Pickens milk paint. Um, I've never tried it with anything else. If anybody else has tried to use bond with other paint, weigh in, please. Hey, Amber, how are you, honey? Okay, I'll set that down for a second. Sorry, I love getting on and reading comments, you guys. People watch the replay and they're like, ah, oh, you're just looking at your phone. I'm just hanging out with my friends. How's this angle? This is kind of a weird spot. This was a big piece of furniture. I was going to try to put it up on my um, work table, but it was way too big. Let's bring it down just a little bit. That's better. So yeah, it's supposed to be nice here all week. I'm gonna get out tomorrow and dig through all that good free junk and do a, do a haul and some flips on Thursday and then do some more flips on Sunday. I've been digging this sage green color. I'm moving straight on to spring projects. I'm hoping that that will encourage the weather here in Kansas just to move straight on to spring. <laughs> Probably wishful thinking. Ooh, however though, I did order this year some JRV Valentine's Day decoupage paper. That is available up on my site now. And it's gorgeous, beautiful vintage designs. Um, kind of in postcard sizes. It reminds me a lot of the newsprint where you can cut it up and make a ton of little projects. So I'm gonna be doing some Valentine's Day projects this year. And then spring. <laughs> I got a kiddo yawning behind me. She's going to make me yawn. So you can see this coverage is good. Just like DIY. I've got a couple of spots that are a little bit lighter. And I may go back in and do like a little second half coat. But if you leave them that way, then it's going to distress way cooler. And I will end up taking this piece outside tomorrow to distress it with a sander. Might do a little bit tonight, we'll see. What are the things on the drawers? Oh, Kathleen, I just stuck, um, I tied some jute through the handles just so I could open and close them. The handles are right here, they're super cool. Oh, somewhere behind me. Got to get you 100,000 subscribers. Um, inspiring creative expression. We are on our way. I am hopeful. It's going to be an amazing year. Yes, if you, if you guys don't mind, if you could share this video out, thumbs up. I would appreciate it. That's going to help me get there faster. So look at these handles. Let me find all the pieces to one. They have like these eye hooks, right? That go through the back or go through the front actually yes and then they sit in there like how old and cool and primitive are those so anyways Kathleen I just have jute tied through them right now so I can open and close them how cool are those handles and they are so old that they have the square washers Linda I'm keeping the handles I'm gonna clean them up just like a little bit of dawn you know get the grime grease germs off of them but I am not gonna I'm gonna leave them rusty and, and good oh Jane loves them too um Stephanie yes I am gonna wipe off the oil it's probably about time I'm chatting okay um and then Kathleen sometimes I use um oh what's it called like weed whacking line to <laughs> stick through the drawer so I can pull them open otherwise you're tipping your dresser forward don't ask me how I know Oh, some of my oil wax dripped right here. I'm just going to paint over it. <laughs> it's fine. There we go. That'll probably good, uh, give me some good chipping right there. All right, so I've got a couple of little spots that are a little patchy. Got a couple drips. You are going to want to catch your drips with your milk paint. 
because it is not as forgiving as the DIY. But as you can see, it's not a perfectly smooth, perfectly even finish. Okay, we're gonna call that good. And I've got, uh, got a little bit of paint left over, so I'll throw that on some scrap wood if I don't end up using it when I'm done being live. Sugar. All right, where is, here it is, excuse me. I've got here just a lint-free um, rag that you get from the hardware store, Amazon or whatever, and we are going to wipe off that extra oil wax. How, um, how's the lighting, guys? Is it like too bright, too reflective? I haven't done a lot of furniture pieces in this house. And I haven't done a lot of recording in this corner. So give me some feedback and that way next time I can make sure it's good. So I'm just wiping off the excess there. All those little, any of those little chunks are just coming right off. No worries. And I think that's just because my bottle's so old, it's not usually like that. The products last forever though. So I open so many things to try them, they sit. Now, I could do another coat and we could get this darker. I'm thinking I probably will. Um, I let it sit, I don't know, how long has it been? How long have I been gabbing? 10, 15, 20 minutes. You let it sit a little longer, it'll soak in, but it'll only soak in so much before it starts drying. You don't want it to dry on there. Um, but if I do want to do another coat, I need to let it dry for 12 hours before I put on another coat. But, weigh in. Another coat, make it darker. If you are just hopping on, guys, my name is Bree, owner and artist here at Upcycled by Bree, and we are milk painting an antique dresser. Using Sweet Pickens milk paint and oil wax to give it a nice antique finish. Do I have a rack with rollers to move my furniture around? Um, Carol needs to add her name to the, her title. Thank you, Carol. I will try to remember that. You might have to remind me a couple times. Um, Carol says, do I have a rack that I'm using? Right now, I'm just using um, mm -mm, some little cheapy rollers. Uh, these are off Amazon. I think they're in my Amazon shop. If not, I can hop on and add them on there. I think they were about $25, and they're okay for small pieces like this. I really need to get some good, big, like industrial wooden ones um, for some bigger pieces, but these work. All right, got 90 people on. Hello, everybody. Been on about 23 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with a heat gun. It shouldn't be too loud. Um, a heat gun is gonna help dry it a little bit faster. With the milk paint, you've got to be super careful because it will encourage it to chip and crackle. I want a little bit of that. Um, and I also want to see if I can get it dried up a little bit faster for you guys. Um, Stephanie says another coat on the oil wax, make it darker. I agree. So like I said, I will have to let it dry overnight and then I'll add another coat to it in the morning. So hop back on Friday, Stephanie, and you can see how much darker it gets. Oh, I missed a little bit. These lives are always fun. This is how I work in real life. A little bit here, a little bit there. Leslie thinks darker too. I say darker too, you guys. Well, I'll do another coat on it. I was going, I was going to anyway. <laughs> I just figured I'd ask. Kathleen likes it the way it is. Um, one coat of oil wax looks fine. So, ah, we're kind of split. We'll see. We shall see. The only thing I'm worried about with is melting these a little bit. Hopefully that doesn't happen. So you do not have to use a heat gun. Um, if you don't want a lot of chipping and crackling, I recommend not using a heat gun but it does help dry your piece a little bit faster. 
Also with the milk paint, if you let it sit out in the sunshine, it will really encourage it to crack. Let me get this dried up a little bit and then I'll bring you in closer. Um, and I think I'll do a little distressing with the uh, sanding block. Can you go on my craft cart and get the uh, sandpaper block for me? It's on the second, second shelf. So if you've watched my last couple of videos, I have been hopping on some trendy trends with the Pantone colors of the year. Um, Pantone is a color company that is, is famous for creating the color swatches, the universal color swatches, right? So the big colors of 2022 are going to be very peri, a beautiful like smoky periwinkle color, and then um, some gorgeous complimentary colors. This kind of sagey is one of them. So my last couple of videos have been highlighting those two colors. Between the two, which one are y'all digging? I know I've got a lot of green lovers. Um, Carol said Harbor Freight had little dollies. She was thinking of getting to move her furniture. Carol, I would suggest um, kind of big go, go big or go home on them. Honestly, invest a little bit in good ones. These get kind of tippy. And I go to push a piece of furniture around and they fall out from underneath. Maybe, maybe if you can, just go with the big, like, wooden movers. Everybody's loving the green. Yes. Heidi, Jane, Amber, of course, of course. And then, but is it Bev? Bev? I feel like I always say that wrong. B E V E. Kathleen likes the periwinkle. Thank you. I did have a lot of purple lovers. A lot more than I thought. Um, I thought about trying the purple again, though, and instead of using Hey Sailor, which is like a dark navy blue, using Blue Iris, which is a much brighter blue. My um, my mix was a little too red, a little on the a little too on the red side, which brought it a little more lavender, I'd say, than periwinkle. So I might try it again. I'm not going to do too much purple though, probably. Uh, hey, Melissa. No worries, Melissa's late. That's okay. I'm actually using Sweet Pickens Milk Paint, Melissa, and I'm doing a custom blend. It's 50/50 of basil and creamy. Which, it does look a lot like DIY aviary. You are very, very correct. And I have no bond in this. Just the paint. I have done a couple of, of these old, um, <clears throat> excuse me, of these old antique dressers before that had this alligator crackle on them, so I knew this was going to be a good candidate. It pained me a little to paint it, I'm not going to lie, but it was free and it was in bad shape and I needed to paint something today. It was beautiful. All right, I'm going to slowly move you in. I want you guys to see this. You can't, you can't miss this. I'm surrounded by things. <laughs> All right, don't let me make you too sick here. Go. This is better. <laughs> Maisie's crawling. Okay, sorry. Stephanie said she's not a huge purple fan, but she loves what I did. Thank you, honey. Um, Melissa asked if she thought the purple would be a big seller or if I, I'm sorry, if I thought the purple would be a big seller. Um, Melissa, I sold a few of the pieces online already for sure. I have not put them in my booth yet. I'm going to do that later this week. So I'll see how they do locally. I have a feeling they're not going to do as great locally for me, but we will see. 
Um, and then I had done some purple a couple of months ago that sold pretty well. Purple lovers, if they love purple, they love purple. Okay, can we see some of this good chipping and crackling that I'm getting? I just want to bring you off the tripod because I don't think you can. Oh my gosh, this is dangerous. There we go. So with the heat gun, it really started to uh, bring out all that yummy, yummy texture and all that crackle. That's very good. I'll take some really good edited pictures of this too so you guys can see. Yes, and now when I sand over that, it's going to be gorgeous. Oh my goodness, don't end my life. Phew. This is why Zev never wants Jamie to touch the camera. Made it, we made it. <laughs> okay, sorry, I had to show you guys that closer. I feel like you couldn't fully appreciate the crackle. So that is why I love a Sweet Pickens Milk paint. I have never had another paint that would do that that easy. I mean, I know you can apply like glue and you can do like Vaseline or whatever, um, but it's not as authentic and chippy as that. So that, folks, is why we use milk paint. <laughs> And on this old antique piece, it looks like that paint has been on there forever now. So anyways, love me some milk paint. Um, Linda Purdy, since you have not tried it yet, I suggest you do. I think you like some crackle. Now I'm gonna take the, this is like a, probably a 120, but been used enough that it's more like a 220. And I'll go over it, honestly, with an orbital tomorrow. It's going to make my life easier. And I don't want to um, completely dust up my house here. <laughs> but let's do a little bit. And I did have to do a couple repairs on this. I have not <laughs> cleaned the inside out yet. I'll judge. Oop, sorry. Oh my goodness, I hope you didn't have headphones in. Um, you can get the milk paint wet again a little bit, like with a continual mist bottle, just barely wet and then distress it. That will encourage a little, um, a little extra distressing, but it's nothing like the DIY when it comes to wet distress. Milk paint is going to be on there for, for good, good. I will also with the inside of the drawers, I'll sand them down real good and then um, use just the Sweet Pickens beeswax. I have mine in a mason jar because I broke the container. But the Sweet Pickens beeswax is a lot like DIY, super creamy, all natural, but it smells so good, like oranges. So I like to hit the inside of these old antique dressers with that beeswax too. We'll do that Friday. Hello, Miss Bad Skirt. You need to watch the beginning later. No worries, honey. You can watch the replay for sure. I'm doing some milk paint on this antique dresser. Getting some good chippy crackly finish. And then um, Miss Bad Skirt, check the live chat later too. I dropped my creative group in the live chat and I'll drop it in the description box when I'm done. But I'm going to be finishing this on Friday um, in my creative group. So a little start in it tonight. We'll get it all finished up on Friday. I am sanding right over those keyholes and the milk paint is coming off the metal since there's no bond in it. No extra bond in the milk paint. It's chipping right off that metal, which I'm glad. I was hoping it, kind of hoping it would. I'm not patient enough to paint around stuff like that though. <laughs> All right, now as I go over that alligator texture, you can really see it pop out. Oh, this drawer's heavy. Sorry if that's loud. 
probably is. A little bit of tannin sanding dust coming through that paint. It'll brush off. For the most part, I might have got a little bit of bleed through, <clears throat> not gonna lie. If it starts to look like bleed through a lot when I am um, sanding it down, I'll probably hit the whole thing with dark oil wax that okay I think that's about as far as we're gonna go tonight how long have I been on oh, 35 minutes because my sanding block is not super super great and my arms are really tired so what kind of questions do we have about milk paint go ahead and drop some questions I'm going to drop the milk paint collection again from my site Again, this is a 50-50 mix, basil and creamy. I used a quarter cup of basil and a quarter cup of creamy. Half a cup of warm water on this little piece. I have about that much paint left over, one coat coverage here. On the top, I did the dark oil wax by Sweet Pickens. So far, I've got one coat on, I applied it, I wiped off the excess. We've got this beautiful, beautiful color. I'm actually really digging that color, especially for spring. Hold on one second, Linda, I didn't see your comment. Let me drop this link before I forget and I'll check it. Okay, Ooh, we've got lots of questions. Okay, let's go back just a little. Hey, Elaine, how are you? All right, Linda said she liked the crackle. She'll give it a go soon. You should, Linda. I think you'll like it. Teresa said it's beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Elaine, hello. Do catch the replay. We're playing with milk paint. You know the drill. Melissa said she has an old chest just like this. She might have to try milk paint. She's still afraid of it. Don't, I know it, it's a little scary. Um, try it on something small, maybe an old piece of wood. I will let you know um, the Sweet Pickens line has sample sizes, just little two ounce samples. They're only $6. And there's samples of Bond on my site that are only $6 as well. Um, it's a two ounce, I don't know. I think that's probably, it's, I know it's at least half a cup of paint. You know, so like paint something like this with a two ounce. Maybe don't quote me on that, <laughs> but it goes a little ways. Um, a sample, let me say this, a sample of Sweet Pickens milk paint will paint a little side table or like um, a couple. If it, anyways, my point was, Melissa, don't be too scared. Grab yourself a sample. Try it out. Uh, Lindsay said she wasn't able to catch everything. Is this just one coat of milk paint? Yes, Lindsay, this is just one coat. It's a 50-50 of basil and creamy. So the color's not that dark but great coverage on that raw wood. It really soaks it in and holds on tight. Um, Teresa, you can definitely still get bleed through with milk paint. Yes, especially with your whites and the um, stain that was under this was very old and um, alligator-y. <laughs> so I, I figured it might bleed through. I think I've got just a little bit here. Um, with going dark on the top and doing probably some wax on the bottom, I just don't care. <laughs> Linda, yes, I will do a top coat. Um, I will probably just top coat this, Linda, with the Sweet Pickens beeswax because it's super simple, just like the DIY wax. Use a brush, apply it on, wipe it off. It smells great. Um, and then I might go in, too, and do a little bit of the dark beeswax. So the, um, the darker colors in the Sweet Pickens line are not quite as creamy as the DIY. They're a little bit harder, but they're still super easy to use. Um, and Linda, I will do that Friday in my creative group. 
Is there a color close to mint chip? If not, what would you recommend for a custom mix? Ooh, Heidi, there's, ah, man, I don't know if there's one quite as bright as mint chip. Let me check something real quick. Sweet Pickens has a ton of colors. Let me just look. If you guys know your milk paint colors, weigh in. Um, I know there's Pantry Door, which is a lot like Apothecary, but Mint Chip is a lot brighter. Ooh, Julep. I think it's called Julep. <laughs> I got excited. I remembered. Hold on. What other questions do we have? Always a lot of milk paint questions, for sure. Ah, so Heidi, that's Julep. I'm on Jamie's site. <laughs> don't go Shelfry's site. No, I'm kidding, I don't have Julep in stock, so if you want Julep, go go hit Jamie up or find your local retailer. Um, I don't have all the milk paint colors in stock. There's so many. I really stick with colors that are on brand with me. Um, I thought there was one more. Hold on, though. I thought there was one more. Oh, you know what I should do? You know what would be way easier? Have a, one of my sample cards over here. Um, okay, so there's that color. It's called Patina. That's a lot like mint chip, in my opinion. Um, ooh, 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 ooh. I would say Patina or Julep. Patina looked closer to me. Sorry, this is my kid's phone. I'm not very good with it. <clears throat> How many people did I just lose? <laughs> Yeah, I'd say so, Heidi. I'd say julep is closest. There's all the greens. Okay, or I'm sorry, I'd say patina's, oh goodness, patina, patina's the closest. All right, that's enough of that. What else, what else? Don't forget to like and share. Thank you, Miss Elaine. Oh, there's so many questions. Uh, Miss Badskirt said she did a random uh, chair with a sample size of milk paint. Thank you. So yeah, sample will cover a chair for sure. On a different subject, I was wanting to get a Klingon brush. Could you possibly do a video on how to store and use them? Of course, Lindsay, I can. Um, Elena, will you go get me, will you write me a sticky note? Oh, you have a pen and paper. She has a pen and paper in her hand, my little assistant, that says demo on Klingon. D-E-M-O, demo on Kling, C-L-I-N-G, on brushes. And set it on my desk. I got you. Um, Elaine, how would you stop bleed through? I would uh, either spray it with shellac, that's what I normally do, um, like a spray sealer and um, let that dry or you could use um, DIY salvation solution clear or white uh, Melissa said she bought something I'm sorry she painted something with the DIY paint that she bought from me thank you for supporting me I appreciate that and sealed it with white wax does she also need to use the clear wax no ma'am white wax is all you need. Lindsay said they need, uh, she keeps reading they need to be stored in water, the Klingon brushes, and they, they do not need to be stored in water. Um, you can let them soak in water overnight, and the next morning the paint just like falls out of the bristles. But I will do a video on it. I'll probably just do like a quick short one minute on my YouTube channel, or a reel. Easy peasy, I got you girl. And they're super easy. They're like the easiest brush I've ever cleaned, used, stored, but I got you. Um, Bev said she loves how far the milk paint goes. You can mix up only what you're going to use. Uh, of course, of course. Heidi says, thank you. I appreciate it. Heidi, thank you. Okay. I think that's about it. 
Leslie said Willow looks close to mint chip too. Um, so check that out. Miss Heidi or M Melissa. I'm sorry. Whoever asked Melissa, I think I'm confusing myself. All right, y'all. I think that's it for questions. So again, join me on Friday. Let me drop that link one more time um, in my Facebook creative group. And we are going to finish this bad boy up together. And then it will be available locally. I might list it up for sale on my website too. I can ship. <clears throat> if you are catching the replay, I will drop all of the links down in the description box below. But also click on that live chat button and you can see what I'm rambling on about with all of my friends here. Please like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it out with a friend. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel. Hit that little notification bell to all so you don't miss any new videos. And I will see y'all back here on Thursday. We're going to have a big, huge, free estate sale haul. Thank you guys so much. I will see y'all soon. Bye, friends.